Hello, YouTubers. My name is Willie. Welcome to my channel. Today I have requested video number 36. It is requested by a, and forgive me if I get this wrong, Halu Lajostin. Again, sorry. I'm. I can't really wrap my my tongue around it. Um, the request is for another the Templin Institute video. This one is System Alliance Mass Effect. So let's check it out. In the year 2148, explorers on Mars discovered the remains of an ancient spacefaring civilization. In the decades that followed, these mysterious artifacts revealed startling new technologies, enabling travel to the furthest stars. Faced with the yes. realities of establishing an interstellar dominion and all the opportunities and dangers that presented, Earth's 18 most powerful nations established a political body to represent and defend humanity. When mankind finally encountered alien civilizations and was welcomed into the galactic community, they marched forward into this new era united under the system's alliance. The alliance's primary responsibility is to represent all of humanity on the galactic stage, as well as the governance and defense of its extrasolar colonies. A supranational institution, the system's alliance has been granted this authority by the various individual system nations alliance. of Earth who maintain some degree of autonomy on the planet itself. However, the Alliance's multitude of successes have ensured that the organization remains Earth's primary diplomatic, economic, military, and exploratory agency. As the Alliance has expanded its presence across the galaxy and more colonies and outposts are established, it has slowly begun transitioning into something resembling a more traditional government. Since 2156, the political and military headquarters of the Alliance has been Arcturus Station. This massive facility houses both the Executive Office of the Prime Minister and the Alliance Parliament. The Parliament is made up of elected representatives of Earth's okay. nations and its colonies, and several it's seats are reserved for the growing population of citizens who reside entirely in space. In addition to those on Arcturus, the Alliance also maintains various diplomatic and governmental facilities across Alliance space and beyond. These include a growing network of embassies and consulates on many different alien worlds, as well as on the Citadel itself. It is the Alliance military that is perhaps the most well-known aspect of the organization, however, having achieved numerous victories in various conflicts and peacekeeping operations in its short history. The Alliance Navy is the primary branch of service, and operates several thousand warships divided between various fleets, which are themselves comprised of numerous flotillas and squadrons. As a signatory to the Treaty of Farazin, the system's alliance is limited to the number of dreadnoughts it can bring into service. The Navy nonetheless has been able to largely circumvent this restriction by instead building similarly sized fleet carriers, a distinctly human innovation. Accordingly, the Alliance possesses one of the largest and best equipped military forces in the galaxy. Alliance fleets are supported by distinct component services, the largest of which are the Alliance Marines, who fulfill the need to conduct prolonged planetary operations. Marines routinely receive gene therapy treatments to improve their strength and stamina, and the Alliance has also shown great interest in the recruitment of biotics, individuals who can generate small mass effect fields at will. Marine divisions are typically assigned to serve as garrison forces on human colonies, while smaller units might be embedded aboard Navy warships or deployed to distant outposts. These forces are not expected to defeat any potential invasion on their own, but rather to provide intelligence and reconnaissance on enemy movements in preparation for an overwhelming counterattack by Alliance battle groups situated at strategic mass relays. 
This strategy is indicative of the Alliance's overall doctrine, which emphasizes mobility and individual initiative in support of coordinated maneuver warfare. This greatly contrasts with the prevailing attrition-based military strategies employed by the Turians and Krogans, who often rely on brute force. On the offensive, Alliance units will instead bypass enemy strongpoints in favor of disrupting supply lines and logistics and destroying headquarters and support units in an effort to keep the opposing force perpetually off balance. When pursuing especially challenging objectives, the Systems Alliance makes use of dedicated Special Forces teams. Members of these elite units take part in the extraordinarily intense Interplanetary Combatives Training Program, which includes specialized training in zero-g combat, jetpack flight, combat diving, and frontline trauma care for human and alien biology. Soldiers that have achieved the highest level of proficiency in this regimen are awarded the highly coveted vocational code N7. The uniquely human approach to warfare has afforded the Systems Alliance a great deal of respect across the galaxy, and the Citadel Council in particular is eager to utilize their immense peacekeeping potential. Council analysts regard the Systems Alliance as something of a sleeping giant, due to the comparatively small number of Alliance citizens who volunteer for military service. In their stead, Virtual intelligences, drones, electronic warfare, and fire support are used to offset this manpower gap. The military has been the spearhead of the Systems Alliance for almost all of its history, and is in many ways responsible for its predominant position in human affairs. Even in the earliest days of interstellar exploration, the Systems Alliance operated numerous warships, for the discoveries on Mars had instilled a deep wariness across humanity over the potential of encountering an advanced alien race. This concern was seemingly warranted. In 2157, the Systems Alliance was in the midst of its first great expansion program and had established dozens of new colonies and began harvesting a wealth of fresh resources. Nice. Every mass relay discovered was activated, and the systems it brought within reach were explored and charted. Unbeknownst to humanity, however, the activation of mass relays without first knowing where they led was considered reckless by the Citadel Council and illegal within their space. When a Turian patrol fleet encountered a Systems Alliance scout flotilla, the Turians opened fire. While the nations of Earth were paralyzed with indecision, the Systems Alliance delivered an immediate counterattack. Despite being overextended due to the ongoing colonization efforts, the Alliance put up a valiant defense. The situation came to a head on the Alliance colony of Shanxi. Besieged by Turian forces in orbit, the colony's garrison surrendered and Shanxi was occupied. Believing the majority of the Alliance forces to have been routed, the Turians were caught unprepared when a powerful retaliatory fleet entered the planet's orbit and reclaimed the colony. As the Systems Alliance and nice. Turian hierarchy prepared for a full-scale war, the Citadel Council intervened and brokered a truce. The first contact war was relatively brief and bloodless, with less than a thousand casualties on each side, but it served to introduce humanity to the greater galactic community and set the standard by which they would be judged. Having previously found no equals in war since the Krogan Rebellion centuries earlier, the Systems Alliance earned the begrudging respect of the Turians and drew the interest of the Citadel Council. On Earth, the Alliance had gained the necessary political clout to represent humanity and establish its own governmental institutions. Humanity and the nice. Systems Alliance swiftly integrated into Citadel society and the galactic economy. Human corporations became key players in the various markets, and humans were commonplace on both the Citadel and across numerous alien worlds. In 2165, the Alliance was granted an embassy on the Citadel itself, seen by many as the prelude to an eventual seat on the Council. Humanity clearly had great potential, which the Asari, Salarians, and Turians were keen to make use of. But the Alliance's unprecedented expansion and rise to political power drew the ire and concern of many other species who began to accuse the Council of giving the Alliance preferential treatment. When the Council refused to grant the Batarian hegemony the exclusive colonization rights to the disputed territories of the Skillian Verge, the Batarians severed all diplomatic and economic relations. Assisted by Batarian financiers, a coalition of pirates, slavers, and warlords launched an attack on the human colony of Elysium. 
in what would become known as the Skillian Blitz, the Alliance won a terrific victory, further cementing their place in the galaxy. This. These conflicts shattered an era of relative peace that had lasted for nearly a millennium, and fairly or unfairly, humanity was sometimes portrayed as arrogant, aggressive, and disruptive in non-human media. In 2183, in an effort to mend well, this reputation, clear. the Systems Alliance began working that closely way. with the Turian hierarchy, Regular jointly media. developing a prototype Deep Scout frigate. The ship was then placed under the command of the first human specter, Commander Shepard. During the course of an investigation into the death of a Turian specter, the Systems Alliance slowly became aware of a growing extragalactic threat known as the Reapers. Soon after, one of these Reapers, revealed to be a massive sentient starship known as Sovereign, attacked the Citadel alongside a fleet of Geth warships. The Alliance Navy successfully intervened, eliminating Sovereign and then leading a coalition force to root out the remaining pockets of Geth resistance. By 2185, the Alliance had risen to a higher standing in galactic politics, a position to which it had some difficulty adjusting. After the entire population of several human colonies were abducted, human supremacy organizations, most notably Cerberus and Terra Firma, began advocating the complete removal of humanity from galactic society. <laughs> a year later, in 2186, despite every preparation, the Reapers finally arrived in the Milky Way and began a coordinated invasion of staggering scope. Aware of humanity's role in resisting their earlier incursions into the galaxy, the Reapers destroyed the capital of Arcturus Station and decapitated the Alliance leadership within the opening few hours. Wow. Reaper landings took place on Earth itself, and faced with a staggering death toll, all remaining Alliance forces evacuated the solar system, regrouping with Allied fleets and armies under the leadership of Commander Shepard and the surviving Admiralty. As resistance groups on Earth fought a desperate battle to delay the Reapers for as long as possible, an enormous counteroffensive began mobilizing. In a last bid attempt to save all organic life in the galaxy, the Systems Alliance spearheaded what was perhaps the largest military operation in galactic history. In orbit of Earth, Alliance Navy vessels, together with the Turian Hierarchy, Salarian Union, Asari Republics, and dozens of other alien forces, engaged the Reapers in a ferocious battle, while hundreds of thousands of ground forces were deployed to the battlegrounds below. The ultimate fate of the Earth, and the human specter named Shepard who tried to save it, might never be known. And in the eras since, conflicting accounts have been uncovered. But whatever the case may be, the rise of humanity with the Systems <laughs> Alliance and the great effort it undertook to fight for the galaxy will never be forgotten. The Templin Institute investigates nations, organizations, and factions from alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Do you have a suggestion for a future episode? Let us know by leaving a comment. Well, that was really interesting. It almost makes me want to crank it out and play it. Um, I have a copy of it, of the original somewhere but i have a copy of like the last one i think i have a copy of like all of them that i just you know got cheap and the reason originally why i got them was uh, i was really obsessed with uh dead space and collecting all the suits i could <laughs> and uh literally you had to have a game save on the system is how I think it worked. And then you could get the N7 suit for your cable for your character on uh, Dead Space. So I thought that was real cool. That's why I did it. I might have to uh, try and play some of that. I think I tried playing the first one a little bit. It was cool how you could design a character and basically you were given choice options. 
It's really neat. Um, so thank you for the suggestion. And again, sorry if I get this wrong. Halu Le Justin. And uh, this video was from the Templin Institute, which uh, seems to research alternative realities. And uh, if you want to see the video I just reacted to, there is a link in the description. So go out, support these guys uh, and their work. And that's, that's all I got to say about that. So have a good one. Willie, out. If you like the video, stay tuned for more content. And as always, feel free to comment. Have a good one.